Welcome once again to It's a Mystery and another collection of fascinating facts, spooky stories and weird and wonderful tales. Yep, once again Gail and I have been out on the trail of some really amazing mysteries. And of course here in the studios we'll be attempting to solve some of them. For example, what was the spooky phenomenon that a witness saw swooping out of the night sky? And is it possible for a normal couple to have travelled back in time? And how weird are you? We reveal some amazing truths about the human body. Now, everyone has their own theory about UFOs or unidentified flying objects. Some say it's all a load of nonsense. Others really do believe that there are strange objects flying in the night sky. But Tristan has discovered a genuine mystery that proves that UFOs really do exist. A few years ago, the people of a small country town began to report nighttime sightings of a bizarre glowing light in some woods that lay to the north. On one particular evening, one of these witnesses was driving a pickup truck back to her father's farm just as it got dark. It was totally quiet in that part of the countryside, and there were no houses for miles. And suddenly, about 100 metres up the road, she noticed a glowing light hovering behind some trees. Scared, she stopped the car, and just then the light seemed to change direction. It eventually came to rest high up near the tops of the trees further back from the road. Sensing a chance to escape, the girl revved up the engine and hurried home. The glowing light soon became big news in a little town nearby, and in a local cafe, everyone had their opinions, but no one actually had a plausible explanation for the strange occurrence. So what do you think happened? Well, it's not aliens, is it? No, there's no such thing. That's rubbish. Do you know what I think? What? I reckon it's those kids from the local high school. Really? Yeah, up to their tricks. And then she said she saw this really bright light. In the woods. So what else could it be? It just must have been either a UFO or an alien. So we've probably got a spaceship in our woods. In our village where, where nothing, nothing happens. happens. I'm going to go and have a look later. <sighs> so what on earth was it? Well, let's take another look at the facts. The glowing light had only been spotted at night. It was totally silent and had been seen to rest near the tops of trees. So could it have been some kind of hoax? Had the girl witnessed some sort of alien activity? Or was there a more obvious explanation? What do you think? A local investigator was intrigued by the sighting and decided to examine the case in greater detail. One evening he drove to the same spot and parked up at the side of the road. Everything was quiet. There were none of the usual nighttime sounds of crickets chirping or leaves rustling in the breeze. The investigator pulled his coat tighter around his shoulders. As the hours passed, he began to tire. But suddenly from the top of the trees opposite him, out swooped the glowing light. He followed its path as it dipped behind the trees. Straining to get a better look, the light suddenly swooped right over his head. And he made the incredible discovery that it was indeed a UFO. But not an unidentified flying object. Unbelievably, it was an unidentified flying owl. And the amazing thing was, its back end was glowing. <laughs> I don't know about this, Neil. What are you on about? I mean, the story seems a little bit far-fetched. Well, if you look closely at an owl, you can see that he's got very soft, thick feathers which let him fly around silently in the night. And they also nest and roost in trees. OK, I buy that. It could have been an owl flying around silently in the dark, but a luminous owl. I don't see how an owl could possibly glow. OK, we're just getting to that bit. Now, 
Our experts think the most likely explanation for the glowing is that whilst resting in the hollow of a tree, the owl rubbed against a naturally occurring luminous substance, something like this fungus which glows. Or this honey fungus which has a special bit below the stalk that also glows in the dark. So, it could have been that. Now, although this explanation for the glowing owl is technically possible, reports of such an event taking place are extremely rare. Unfortunately, experts haven't yet managed to catch and test a luminous owl. How weird are you? Here's a mystery for you. What would you say if I told you that everyone, no matter how old they are, is one centimetre smaller right now than they will be when they wake up tomorrow morning? I'd say weird. Yeah, it is weird because you and your body and us and ours, in fact, everybody is capable of some really weird things. It's a mystery how weird the body can really be. Take a look at this. girls very impressive now when you think about it that is amazing carrying your entire body weight on a couple of toes doesn't it hurt yes it does but we do lots of training so our feet get used to the weight of our bodies <laughs> wow in fact Shelley is really lucky that the bones in her feet are as strong as they are now it's unbelievable that human bones are so strong that a tiny piece can support not just a human body but over a ton in weight okay I'm gonna go one weirder just watch what this man can do. Okay, Birkin, off you go. You won't believe this, and uh, don't try this at home. Oh, what is he doing? That oh. looks too big. Oh, no! <laughs> He's clapping his feet behind his ears. Oh, oh that's unnatural. Oh, man, he must be so strong in his arms. Oh. Oh, oh, no. That's actually how I sleep at night. <laughs> that is truly weird. He must be more than double jointed. It's amazing, isn't it? But it's got nothing to do with double joints. In fact, there's no such thing as double joints. Birkin and all of us have the same number of bones and joints in our bodies. And there's only one joint in between each set of bones. It's just that some people have looser joints and ligaments than others. Thanks for that, Birkin. Yeah, thanks a lot. A lot of training must have gone into that. I definitely couldn't do it. Well, yeah, it does take a lot of hard work, and I wouldn't recommend that you do it. <laughs> so that just about proves how amazingly weird the body can be. Hang on a minute. Didn't you say, right back at the start of this piece, you said that we're smaller now than when we get up in the mornings? Yeah. I stopped growing ages ago, so how is that possible? Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you, when you walk, with each step, the weight of your body pushes down on your bones, squashing them slightly tighter together. And this pressure, as you walk about, actually makes us shrink by about one centimetre. Yeah, and when you go to bed at night, lying nice and flat on your bed, your body and bones aren't under the same pressures. So, it grows back about one centimetre. That's why you're one centimetre taller in the morning than when you go to bed. Oh, weird. Precisely. Here's an incredible mystery for you. An ordinary couple had often been on trips together and had even occasionally got lost. But never before had they managed to get lost in time. It's a mystery, exactly what happened to Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. One summer evening in 1993, Mr. and Mrs. Roberts were on a holiday trip. They were driving through the lanes of Devon, heading towards their motel in Somerset. Are you sure this is the right way, dear? I'm sure this is the right direction. It's just I'm worried we're going to be a bit late. 
You see what time it is? It's only just 7.45. <sighs> All right, dear, we'll stop when we get to the next village and check, hmm? All right. I'm sure we're going to get there in time. So realising that they were lost and having checked the time, the couple stopped at the next village by a green to try and decide which oh. way they should go. Oh, look, love, um, I'll tell you what. Will you pour me a coffee and then I'll have a look at the map? Oh, just look. Mm. Look at those. Those blooms. Yeah, it's very nice. That bed just by you. Really lovely. Yes. Let's put that down for me, lovely. Oh, All right. Oh, look, no, I, I'm staying the map where I was trying to read it. Oh, look, just got there, got there. Having dirtied their map, the couple decided to drive around the village to see if they could find a sign or someone who could help. Just look at all those flowers. It's so pretty. We must come back here again tomorrow. Yes, I'm right, we will. What's that sign say? It's not very helpful. Still, I suppose you'd better go on looking. drove on around the village and after much deliberation they eventually reached a decision on which way to go. Well, hopefully this is the right direction. Don't worry, we're still alright for time. We must have been here for at least 15 minutes. The clock must have stopped. My watch says 7.45, they can't both have stopped. But it hadn't stopped. His watch was still ticking. At the far end of the village they met an old man walking along. Asking him the way to the motel, he duly gave them the exact directions and off they went. Do a right up at the top of the hill. Yeah. Takes you onto the B3227. B3227. And straight through. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Good night. Safe journey. Thank you. Cheerio. So, OK, let, let's just recap on that. A couple who lost their way stop off at a pretty village to look at their map and are astounded by the sight of such wonderful flowers. So what's the mystery there? Apart from the fact that the clocks didn't work properly. Well, events started to take a strange twist the very next day. The couple had decided to return to the pretty flower-covered village the next day to take some photographs. Mr and Mrs Roberts pulled up at the same green where they were the day before. The multicoloured flower bed was nothing more than green grass. The pretty house had lost all its blooms. Puzzled, they drove on. The whole of the village had changed overnight. Even the best-kept village sign had gone. All the tubs and hanging baskets had disappeared and everything seemed drained of colour. But this wasn't the only mystery. Are you sure this is the same village? Well, let's get the map and have a look. Mind you, this will be covered in the coffee I spilled on it. As they opened the map, they saw that there were no marks of the spilt coffee from the day before. Weird. So they'd gone back to the village the very next day and it had all changed. The flowers had all gone and the map was no longer coffee stained. Then there's the fact that on the first visit, the clocks had been 7.45 when they arrived and 7.45 when they had left. Sort of as if time had stood still. Well, this tale actually happened in 1993 to a couple who visited the village of Bampton, which is in the heart of the Devon countryside. So could they have passed into some kind of time warp on their first visit, viewing the village as it once might have been. Had they seen Bampton as it was 17 years earlier, when it had won the Best Kept Village Award and was in a state of full bloom? What do you think? My name's Gareth Pearce and I'm 17 years old. I'm a pupil at St Peter's School in York, which was started in 627. I've been at the school four years. It looks like every other school. But there's something really strange about it. It's a mystery why every year on bonfire night, my school is the only one I know that will not celebrate bonfire night with a bonfire. In fact, they haven't had one since the First World War. And when I was first here, I thought it could have something to do with the school's health and safety policy. Maybe they thought it was an unnecessary risk to the pupils. But I did some research, and it wasn't this. And it's not until you come across this portrait hanging in the Stevenson room that you get a clue about what is going on. It's a painting of a bearded man with a tall black hat 
and lacy collar. So, okay, what's going on? And what's it got to do with the mysterious man in the portrait? Well, it's actually a painting of Guy Fawkes, the man involved in the gunpowder plot to blow up the Houses of Parliament in 1605. But have you guessed why the school never holds a bonfire on November the 5th? Well, Gareth himself can reveal the answer to this mystery. It turns out that Guy Fawkes went to the York School called the Free School in the Horse Fair. And that is actually this school. St Peter's was once known as the Free School in the Horse Fair. It was about 1587 that Guy Fawkes was a pupil of my school. Four of his school friends also turned out to be other people involved in the plot to bring Parliament down. My school won't hold bonfires to burn the guy on bonfire night because they don't want to burn an ex-pupil. Here's a mystery for you. See if you can work out what these two are on about. Hey, have you heard about Arthur? He can travel at the top speed of a family car and he could do us some damage. Well, that's nothing. What about Bertha? <gasps> 500 miles long can produce enough energy to light up more light bulbs than there are in the United States of America. Mm, they sound a little strange. Who on earth are Arthur and Bertha? And how come they're so strong? <laughs> Well, let's see if we can give you another clue. There was also Georges, who, um, oh yeah, he, he visited Florida, I think it was in September last year, with a terrible case of wind. Have you guessed who Arthur, Bertha and Georges are yet? Here's another clue. A strong wind. Oh, <laughs> yep, Arthur, Bertha and George Thanks, are all just... hurricanes. The most unbelievably high winds that you could ever imagine. If you think of what happened to those things just now, a hurricane can do that to real buildings. Now the fastest winds can move at about the same speed as a fast car, which is about 125 miles an hour. And that is why a hurricane can easily cause trees to uproot, windows to smash, and even buildings to collapse. Now luckily, we've only ever had one hurricane here in Britain, and that was over 10 years ago in 1987. But in the whole world, there are up to 40 a year, so people tell them apart by giving them boys and girls names. Hey, what's that noise? <laughs> I think it might be a train, or is it a, uh, a tornado? Well, believe it or not, if you're living in America and you think you hear a train outside, you could be mistaken. And you know, it's a surefire sign if you don't actually live anywhere near a railway line. <laughs> yeah, it's possible that it could be the sound of an approaching tornado, which is like a hurricane, but much more fierce. Now, as they get nearer to you, they sound just like an approaching goods train. You can see a tornado approaching, but it's the winds inside it that can travel at more than a staggering 300 miles an hour. Whoa! <laughs> Motel. So what's all this about then? A tornado in Broken Bow, Oklahoma was so strong that it carried a motel sign for 60 miles and dropped it in another American town in Arkansas. And something even weirder happens when a tornado moves over the sea. Take a look at this. It stirs up the sea into a cloud of spray and then draws up a spout of water. Sometimes the water can get sucked very high up into the sky to over 1,000 metres which is the same as three Eiffel Towers stacked on top of each other. This is known as a water spout. Isn't it amazing how powerful nature can be? Well, that's it. Some more mysteries solved, but plenty more remain unsolved. Don't forget to join us next time as we investigate some more. Here's one last mystery for you to try and solve. A girl walks up to a counter and hands a book to the man behind it. He looks at the book and says, that'll cost five pounds, please. So the girl pays him five pounds, but deliberately leaves without the book. Can you work it out? We'll reveal the answer next time.
last week's final mystery was how can a cowboy who arrives in town on Friday stay two nights to stock up on food and drink then leave again on Friday? The answer is he was riding a horse called Friday.